Hello, and welcome to The Gone Roo Show. I'm Golda. And I'm on Roo. And this is a podcast that's just like hanging out with your two best girlfriends. We'll tell it to you straight and not hold back. It's like writing a best-selling novel without the mental breakdown. <laughs> yes, it's like being a prima ballerina without the jacked-up toes. Ooh. It's like finding Waldo every single time. Just boom. Right there. There it is. Right there. There he is. Right there. Next page. Saw you again. Mm-hmm. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to unleash your creativity. Oh, thankfully. Yes, finally. I feel like I've been holding it all in. I feel like I've been really boring. But no longer. We're going to unleash it on you guys today. So let's, let's get, get started. started. So we always start with the best thing that we heard this week. It could be something we heard in the news or just walking around. So Golda, what's the best thing you heard this week? Well, the best thing that I heard this week uh, was in regards to a study called the Marshmallow Test. Are you familiar with this study? Oh my gosh. Here we go. No, I have not heard about the Marshmallow Test, but I'm dying, dying to know about it now. Okay. Well, wait no more. (laughs) Because the marshmallow test was a Stanford study mm-hmm. um, over 50 years ago. So I'm a little late. <laughs> so I'm a little t- late. So by the way, these things don't have to be current. Because <laughs> Golda just happened to hear about it this week, correct? Well, here's the thing is that uh, the marshmallow test actually took several years for it to uh, come together. So mm-hmm. it's it's been 50 plus years in the making. But as far as the results of the test... It's fairly recent, I okay. guess. But anyway, the, the marshmallow test essentially was a test uh, testing young children uh, essentially um, on whether or not they would be happy with one marshmallow right away mm-hmm. or if they waited, they could have two marshmallows. Mm-hmm. So actually, now that you're talking about it, it's refreshing my memory. It mm-hmm. was like a psychology test mm-hmm. where they would separate it sounds horrible separate the children from their parents yeah play a fun little game with them yeah and then a stanford research associate would give them an option right yeah if you can have one delicious fluffy marshmallow and they put it on a plate right in front of them Mm -hmm. or if you can wait 15 minutes and they show them the clock the clock is in the room yeah they will get two marshmallows right is this, is this right? I that's, hope I'm not... That, no, that's yeah, exactly okay. right. And mm-hmm. so what they found was that the children who wanted immediate gratification mm-hmm. over the course of time didn't do as well as the children who waited to eat the two marshmallows after 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Sort of that delayed gratification. And right? what do you mean by... Self-control. Absolutely, yeah. I was going to say... What do you mean by they didn't do as well over time? Well, studies have shown, this is why I mentioned the 50-year situation, <laughs> because the, uh, the doctor who initiated this uh, study actually studied these same children, these two groups of kids, the, the folks who waited mm-hmm. for the two marshmallows and the ones that wanted the marshmallow right away right. over the course of 50 years' time. Mm-hmm. And the study uh, came back that the kids who waited for the two marshmallows actually had a lower BMI, which is <laughs> fat content in their body. Okay. They had... Which is ironic because they ate two marshmallows as children. Yeah. Hmm. But anyway, that's... A, okay, all right. Hmm. All right, go on, go on. So... <laughs> so they had lower BMI. Yeah, lower BMI, lower rates of addiction. Oh, Any which is kinds weird. of addiction, okay. right? Okay. Um, lower divorce rates... Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, higher SAT scores. Okay. And the study also showed that the this category of, of kids dealt with stress better in pursuit of their goals. Okay, now I have a question. Yeah. All right, first of all, let's name the two k- groups of kids, okay? Group one, which is the ones who wanted the marshmallow right away. Let's call them the YOLO kids. Okay. YOLOs. <laughs> like the YOLO. YOLOs. Eat this. I'm going to eat this now because what's going to happen yes. in 15 minutes? I don't know. Yes. Right? YOLOs. Yes. YOLOs. And what would the second group, the delayed gratification people be called? Um, the drags. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. 
<laughs> the drags. Uh, the people you don't want to talk to at an office party. Yeah, like, I have a joke, but I'm going to tell it to you in, like, four hours. Uh, have Tell that, me now! Uh, Golda, have you uh, been putting money into your 401k? Oh, yeah. I put four, money in my 401k, like, when I was 15 years old. <laughs> Exactly. So we would call them the drags. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what was I going? Where, where, where am I going with this? These uh, are just funny <laughs> names because we all fall. We either are yoloers or we're drags, right? <laughs> so we're putting ourselves into these categories here. But I have some questions about the two groups. Yes. Shoot. Which group was more attractive? Huh? Was it more attractive? Yeah, which group ended up being more attractive? Like hot. Which was the hotter group? I don't I don't know if that was one of the criteria as they What's up, Stanford? That, you what, didn't you don't have that, that metric? That? You didn't put that metric in your study? What are you trying to say? That the people who are the YOLOs are are more attra- like the drags are, are just a bunch of like gnarly ugly <laughs> monsters? I don't know. I'm just curious. Like, okay, they're measuring all these things like SAT score, you know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, rates of addiction. These are hard things to measure. Mm-hmm. Rating attractiveness is easy. You just look at them. You're like, oh, oh he looks pretty good. So what you're saying is that if they're YOLOs and they weren't as successful, at least they were good looking. Exactly. They might get by on their looks, <laughs> although they have higher BMIs. So and that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> That's just a metric. But yeah, higher BMIs does not equate to ugly. Exactly. Exactly. Stanford. Stanford. Back. We need We're ready. Contact us. We're available for consultation. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I have another question. Yes. Which one is more fun at a party? I think I know the answer. Don't you? Come on. Well, I mean, look at the, our day and age, right? Where we have everything at our fingertips, right? Mm-hmm. With, with phones and, you know, where we want instant gratification. Right. I think this is, an, this is interesting in that in today's environment, we are programmed for immediate gratification. So right, does that right. mean, if we were to believe this study, mm-hmm. does that mean that everyone is destined to be addic- addic- addicted to things and you know they, yeah exactly and does that mean that uh that we're just doomed possibly we may have higher and hell higher, in a handbasket we may have higher and higher bmis and rates of addiction as time goes on yeah i Uh-oh. know but we'll be more fun which is what i predict the yoloers are probably more fun and we're better looking <laughs> so okay. so are you saying then because you seem to be really advocating for the yolos are you saying that you are a YOLO? Would you be that kid? No, of that- course not. I'm the two marshmallow kid. I'm Asian. Look at me. We want to maximize re- return. You're all about the deals. Do the deal. Oh my gosh. You're all about the deals. That's right. It's it's the essence of the deal. So I have to invest nothing but 15 minutes of my time, and I get double on a return. I mean, as an Asian, hmm. I think I would get my Asian card revoked if I didn't wait the 15 minutes. Right? Yep. I mean, if I came out with one marshmallow, my mom would disown me. Right? Well, I, you know, it's interesting because I was thinking about who, which kid would I be? And before um, the, the scientists w- even finished explaining, you right. know, like why they're putting a marshmallow in front of me, I would have probably <laughs> reached for the marshmallow <laughs> before the explanation. Actually, I would have as well. Basically, the <laughs> researcher would have taken a bag or one marshmallow out and I would not have heard anything. Yeah, I'd be like, well, did you say something? <laughs> I'd be like, marshmallow, <laughs> like focusing <laughs> like a laser and not even listening to the instructions. Yeah, they, they actually said that the kids, the drags yeah. that were hanging out waiting for that 15 minutes, mm-hmm. they, they, it showed that the, the drags, <laughs> so funny thing <laughs> calling them that, that okay. the drags actually were very creative because in the 15 minutes that it took for them to get the other marshmallow, they preoccupied Absolutely. themselves. Absolutely, so, yes. you know, they were able to draw from other things because mm-hmm. they didn't have TV or radio or even each other. It was mm-hmm. just them in a room. Actually, right? this is a very, I think this is probably the thing I took away from the study when I read it a couple years back. Oh, which, a couple yeah. years. <laughs> I read it last night. <laughs> because I'm clearly a drag and I'm like, caught up on all the news and yolo Hello. just saw it yesterday 50 year study Golden. so what that i have a 75 bmi that's fine and i have i drive like 20. a 20 a 1996 honda accord 
<laughs> on the <laughs> practi- BMW. <laughs> practically. No, I'm BMI. Too- oh, Honda Accord. Wait, wait, am I wait, am I practical? Yeah, I'm delaying my luxury car for a nice retirement. I'm going to be in the Bahamas. Oh. That's how far I'm thinking. Okay. Okay, because I'm you. a drag. Oh, I'm glad we have one of each represented yes. today. Yeah. Um, no, but the takeaway that I got from this study is that the kids who could delay the gratification really had no more willpower than the kids who couldn't. It's that they tricked themselves almost. How did they do that? It was the cutest thing. So we'll try to find the links of the videos because okay. they're actually available online someplace. Okay. And you can watch when the research, because at least the researcher will, will actually leave the kid alone with the marshmallow for 15 minutes. So they would, they left, the, it's not like they took the marshmallow with them no. and said, I'll come coming back with two marshmallows. Correct. Okay. So it's right in front of them the whole time. So it's even more of a temptation, right? Mm-hmm. So the cutest thing is, is you watch these kids who are, I think, like maybe five years old mm-hmm. seven years old mm-hmm. and they're doing everything not to look at the marshmallows mm-hmm. they sit on their hands mm-hmm. they look around the room they start humming mm-hmm. some s- start shaking their bodies like mm-hmm. physically shaking just to distract themselves mm-hmm. they may start singing songs to themselves yeah perfect so that's what you do next time you want to eat that cheesecake just yeah just start busting out my knitting needles <laughs> <laughs> i'm not thinking about cheesecake <laughs> Absolutely not. Although I'm, you're like, you end up like, but knitting. I make a scarf <laughs> shaped like a cheese. But cake. you know, it, it just it goes to my point about how they said that the the uh, the drag kids right actually were a lot more creative. Absolutely, because yes. they had to figure out a way so mm-hmm. that they were distracted. Yes, by what was in front of them. Absolutely, and what what they also did is they ended up teaching some kids, some techniques to distract themselves, to de- delay gratification. Mm-hmm. And that group of kids did really well, actually. Can they you, went from YOLOers to drags. Can you, uh, can you think of a, a way that we can incorporate this in like everyday activities? I uh, have not successfully walked by a plate of marshmallows recently. Hmm. Well, yourself? you know, um, when I go to the mall... And I go to the food court, and there's yes. if they have a Cinnabon there. Oh my god! Mm. How so, do you walk by instead of going and then buying like the the minis with the regular and then the extra frosting? Oh my god! So that would be the the YOLO kid, right? Doing that, but for a, a drag. drag kid <laughs> with low BMI, what they would, would you go do? to like J.C. Penny, look around. You know, maybe they go outside and, and test, you know, the weather, see how warm it was. <laughs> maybe they would just like walk around, you know, go to Eddie anything, Bauer. Anything, right? Yeah. Anything. Yeah. By the way, you must be going to a mall from like 1997 because there's an Eddie <laughs> Bauer in there. JCPenney's about to close. Where have you seen an Eddie Bauer? Isn't Glendale Galleria here in Los Angeles? Do they have Don't they Bauer? have an Eddie Bauer there? Are they out of business? But regardless, yes, you go to a store, <laughs> any store, just walk by the Cinnamon. But there are benefits to delaying gratification, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. Correct? Because if we just act based on our most primal urges. Yeah, then everybody yeah. would be like killing each other. <laughs> we would, we absolutely would. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, what about you? What What's the best thing you've heard? This week. So uh, the best thing I heard was actually something I said myself oh. last week. <laughs> Hashtag modest. <laughs> Hashtag bring it all back to me. <laughs> okay, right, this is so lame. But last week, I during this podcast, we talked about Jane Goodall. Yes. And it just, oh man, I'm a, she's an icon of mine. Obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm re obsessed with her. So I did some research, and actually the best thing I heard this week was something I found on Wikipedia about her. Okay. What was it? So um, she is a Jane Goodall, for those of you who are not familiar. She's a conservationist, a paleoanthropologist. Did I get that right? Yeah, for those of you who don't know who Jane Goodall is, you should really go back to school. (laughs) What were you doing when you were five? Eating yeah, marshmallows? Were you eating marshmallows? <laughs> because this woman is eating insane. Cinnabon. <laughs> Basically, she was assigned at the tender age of 23 to m- study chimpanzees. Okay? Right, right. And um, the interesting thing I heard was that, and I had heard about this guy before, there is a anthropologist by the name of Louis Leakey, who was one of the pioneers of 
primatology, studying monkeys, apes, great apes, things like that. And he held a belief that men did not have the skill set to study the great apes. The great apes meaning gorillas, orangutans, chimpanzees. There's more of them, but you know, the, the large monkeys. Okay? okay. And he said, because number one, the apes live a long time. And if you're going to study primates, you want to observe their behaviors. And right. you want to get those subtle cues, facial expression, body language, social interactions. They're very social creatures. Yeah. And he felt women, women were better suited for this. Mm. Okay. So he uh, assigned three young women to study the three great apes. And I think you probably will have heard of all of them unless you were eating marshmallows and Cinnabons. Uh, for the chimpanzees, he assigned Jane Goodall. Mm -hmm. For the gorillas, he assigned Diane Fossey. Diane Fossey, yeah. And for the orangutans, he assigned Barute Goldikas. I hope I said her name r right. And of the three, Jane and Barute are still working on con conservation to this day. Wow. So his instinct was right. Not only were they very faithful to studying primates and also to conservation, mm -hmm. but they've dedicated their lives to doing it, which was something he felt men were less likely to do because he called mm -hmm. them, in his words, they call, he called them ambitious hierarchicals. So he felt like men were well, such... Well, that's, that's, a, that's a sleigh. <laughs> like if you ever... Like, if, if you want to like insult somebody, <laughs> you are ambitious hierarchical. Ooh. Oh, oh, snap. Them's fighting words. Ooh. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So he said that because men are so cutthroat and, and ambitious, yeah. they would not dedicate their lives to the apes. And uh, come on, Diane Fossey gave her life to the apes. Yeah, right? literally. Okay. So this was amazing. I was like, oh, that's awesome because he sort of pioneered this field and he also made all these women famous. But yeah, I also read that he was also like a womanizer. Yeah. Like, well, why didn't he go out there? <laughs> I don't know. Good question. He realized he was also a ambitious hierarchical. And he's like, I, I'm not well suited to this. I'll send these hot babes to the jungles. Oh, wow. That's but interesting. He also was a womanizer and he was quite taken with these young women who were just super attractive. But whatever. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's bad, but look. But look, we got these three great women out of it. We got these three amazing women and yeah. we learned so much about primates and that was the best thing I heard this week. Wonderful. And now we're going to talk about our main topic, which is unleashing your creativity. Mm. One rule, give uh, it to us, drop some knowledge. How do I unleash? Yeah. How do you unleash <laughs> your creativity? First of all, uh, I'm going to have one very simple tip about unleashing your creativity. Okay. So before I begin, I want to ask you, Golda, why did you want to talk about this today? Because this is a topic that you suggested. Yes. So what, what, what brought this about? What brought this about was that I oftentimes find myself in uh, the doldrums. Mm. And what I mean by that is I f oftentimes find myself um not doing anything really creative. I think I get lost in the, the day to day and to, and the routine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before you know it, you know, a week has passed by a month has passed by right. half a year has passed by mm -hmm. and you have nothing really to show for it. You're just kind of doing the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I've been able to get myself out of the doldrums and I, I'm curious to hear what you have done and if you've experienced the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what tips you have, because I, I don't think we're alone or I'm alone in that. And this desire and need to, to be creative, to find that, that color in your life. Right. Interesting. Um, I would say that just for a little background, both Golda and I hold out full-time jobs. Yes. 40 hours per plus. week. 40 hours plus. Yes. I work barely 40 hours. Mine, I'm like 40.0. <laughs> but anyways, I don't have that flexibility where if I want to work on a project, I can take off half a day. I have a very fixed schedule. I work in a very technical job. However, I definitely have a creative side that I like to explore. Yes. Either through many, many different ways, either acting or improv or baking or just looking things up on the internet or doing this project with Golda or even eating Cinnabon with the Golda back in the day. Now we will eat uh, 
maybe cheeses. Quest bars. Quest bars. But <laughs> spending time with her really stimulate, stimulates my creative juices. Oh. And it's, it makes me feel good. But I would like to coach this more in terms of why anybody should become creative. Okay. Right? Like, I yeah. feel you and I, we need it. Yes. You need it to get out of this funk or doldrums yeah. or yeah. to... Um, funk is a good word. Is that a good word? Yeah. I, I didn't know what a doldrum was, so I just... I raised it to a. Funk. I should preface by saying that I just started reading Charles Dickens. Oh my gosh! Okay, so there's all kinds of like old timey words. Okay, so that I'm just kind of weaving in daily conversation. Beautiful, beautiful. By happenstance. Oh, is that, is that another Dixonian word? Happenstance. It? It's so natural now. <laughs> by okay. with, here with all. Oh, I see. I see. Look how creative she's getting just with her, the use of the English language. Either that or I want to be a lawyer. Oh, you know, lawyers talk like that. Do they? Indeed. 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 (laughs) Indeed. So whether or not you, by happenstance, might need a creative outlet, I think it's good for you. Because I think that besides for, what is that? let's say you don't need to be creative in your job. Let's say you have a routine job. Yeah. Right. I think overall you are going to be a happier person and be a more interesting person. And I think it might even delay some diseases like dementia. Oh, really? I think it does. Okay. I think (laughs) what happens is your brain is just a bunch of neural circuits. Mm. They're like firing and connecting. If you Mm. do the same one over and over again, it's like burning an image onto your TV. That's why they have screensavers. Haven't you noticed? Yeah. Screen- no, that's actually really interesting. And this is coming from the scientific background. Oh, yes. This is, yes, this Stanford. Is, she's highly credible. Yeah, Stanford. Don't need to do- fact check. Don't fact check me, Stanford. No need to fact no need. check. No need to Google this that it's correct. No. Because Juan Ruiz said it was. Right. So my yes, thinking is that it's going to help your health and mental acuity overall. Okay. What about more like um like a, a daily um like a, a daily reward like because I am a yolo. A yoloer. Okay, well, how's this gonna help me now? Yeah, I don't care about when I'm now. eighty. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exhibit A. <laughs> exhibit, exhibit B. The dementia I- <laughs> effect. Versus what about right now? What can we do right now? Exactly. This is going to be better I'm in the next so five minutes. I'm going to test my BMI after this. <laughs> gotcha. By the way, I don't know if it's possible to have a 75 BMI. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> well, then again, you are the scientist. You would know better than don't I. Don't fact check us, Stanford. We're, we're going to say 75 <laughs> and we're sticking to it. But okay, you're right. What can, how can it help you now? You know what? You're going to be a happy, possibly a happier person uh-huh. and possibly a more open-minded person yes. and possibly a more even likable, attractive person with a lower BMI. Oh, okay. So let's, let's pretend we're at a party. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you encounter um, like a person who is very creative. Mm. So, hey. Wait. Well, I like your blouse. Wait, who's creative? Me? <laughs> or you? We're going to time out real quick out of this. <laughs> I am the creative. Edit, edit. And um, so I'm going to pretend I'm a creative person at a party. Okay. Right? Because you just said that creative people tend to be more interesting. Okay. Versus the non-creative people aren't as interesting. So this is a benefit of being creative. I see. Right? So at a party, for example... Right. Okay, we're going to role play. I will be neutral person and you'll start as being the non-creative person. How's that? Okay, I'm the non-creative person. And then later you're going to switch to the creative. Okay, I'll per- be the non-creative person. Okay. Okay, ready? <laughs> hey, that's an interesting colored drink. What are you drinking there? Oh, this one right here? <laughs> uh, it's just a ginger ale because it matches my bologna sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I, I've never like, real quick sidebar. I've never eaten a bologna sandwich. <laughs> You're too creative. I'm too You're creative. Too creative. I'm pulling from areas you that I cannot relate to. You have not even eaten. See, Golda, you can't emulate a non-creative no, no, person. No, no, no. You're Come like on. getting I can so do it. creative. No, no, no. I'll do. It. I'll be du- dull. This is a chan- This is a challenge for you. Okay, here we go. Mm. All right. Okay. Channel. Oh, You've God. been doing the same brain circuit. Mm. Okay. You get like a racetrack, like in your mind only. 
You can talk okay. about two things. All right, here we go. Gray, 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 gray. Okay. Okay. Hi. Belinda, right? Yes. I heard you're the sister of the host of the party. I am. I'm the older sister. So nice to meet you. This is a lovely house that your brother has. Yeah, he paid too much for it. <laughs> wah, wah. Mm. Okay, same conversation now. And now you're the creative Belinda. Now you're the Belinda who's like, you've lived, all right? All right? You lived on like five continents, all right? Okay. <laughs> Hi, Belinda. Hi, greetings. <laughs> I love those earrings. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so this is your brother's home? It is. Um, you know, when him and I got back from Madagascar, <laughs> mm-hmm. when we were um, trying to find some artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> what did you eat in Mad- Madagascar? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you asked. <sighs> um, have you ever heard of an animal called scorpions? <laughs> There's an animal. <laughs> Called, scor- <laughs> called scorpions. We can't even continue. We can't even continue. I'm, I'm so glad that you think scorpions are funny. They actually are. You know, in ancient Greece, scorpions were brought out at every party. I am just watching for those of you who are listening to the podcast and not watching the YouTube video. Gold is bad to my being smoking. <laughs> the more creative person naturally is a smoker somehow mm. so she's smoking doing that throughout this whole conversation because they're yolo and they're addicted to yeah things. they're yolo yolo okay all right to be honest i would rather talk to belinda one belinda right. two not belinda one I, i'd rather talk to the smoker who eats scorpions yeah that's a lot of things going there's a lot of topics to talk yeah. about right right okay Kay. all right so we've clearly demonstrated there it is. why unleashing your creativity could be beneficial look at you great at parties great at parties much more interesting all right so i think we've firmly established why you want to be more creative but how how, but how? now how? we're getting to the how how can you become more how creative? okay well, what do you okay I, mine is really easy. Just do something different. Anything, any little thing. Because I know how it is. You only have certain hours, so many hours in a week. Yeah. Just us. We work full time. Mm. Me, exactly 40, her, more than 40. Mm. And people, one of the hardest things people encounter is restrictions on time, right? So yes. I just say, find any little way. And you don't have to go all out. You don't have to go to Madagascar. You don't have to start smoking. I actually hope you don't start smoking. Yeah, don't. But I would say... This is just theatrical dramatization purposes. Exactly. It makes it so Thank much God. more interesting. Um, I would say do something different in one of these categories. Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. Do something physically different. Like, I, if I'm like, if I normally stand one way, I should stand another way? <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> that would be a really, really small thing you could do. But okay. I would say, yeah, like take what? a salsa class. Oh, if yeah. you've never moved your hips, I took a salsa class. I go, oh, my God. It's great. I love salsa. I, I took salsa, too. Yeah, my vertebrae doesn't bend that way, mm-hmm. but I'm going to try mm-hmm. to bend, start bending it in mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. And, or a yoga class or whatever it is that would take you a little out of your physical comfort zone. Okay. Uh, my friend did a burlesque group on with me. Right. Hilarious. Something fun, like that. Fun. Awesome. It, was, uh, it wasn't about necessarily being a stripper it was just mm-hmm. about getting in touch with your body right get a massage right okay like if you're t- what does a la- massage do if you're a lazy person okay yeah, like be creative on me yeah <laughs> i don't want to do any of the work they call time can massage. you focus on the shoulder creativity and the neck creativity exactly can you be creative with my spine right now <laughs> my, my spine is just too rigid no i've heard time massage is like the lazy man's yoga how so you know what how you a Thai massage? I don't think I've ever had a Thai massage. Have you ever had a, a small Thai lady pull your arms behind your back and then put her knee into your spine and then pull you? No. Uh-huh. <laughs> then you have not had a Thai massage. No. They will manipulate your body for you. It exactly. sounds painful. It can be. but <laughs> She says it, with a smile. It, it can be. It can be. <laughs> but the point is, do something that you normally wouldn't mm. do physically. Mm. Okay. So what happens is it puts you in touch with your body and also expands your physical um, limits. Okay. Even if, if, especially if you take up a sport, I think that's amazing. Oh way yeah. To be creative, right. Yeah. If you, it's a great idea. You said, I've always wanted to learn how to swim. Yeah. Do it. Ride a bicycle. Don't know how to do it. 
they have adult bicycle classes. Yeah. And that's like, man, it's such a challenge for your brain, yeah. right? Okay, so take a physical, uh, uh, sorry, push yourself physically, push yourself emotionally. Okay. Now, this is a little more like, how do I get do creative push? emotionally, right? Yeah, what do you mean? Take an acting yourself. class, take an mm. improv class, mm. talk with your friends about emotions, especially for men. Ooh. I don't think men ever have con- conversations about they, mm. how they feel, right? Mm. So when next time, you know, you and your buddy are hitting golf balls, try to delve into a little bit into the emotional side of your relationship. Like, you know, how you've been feeling, how your relationship is with your girlfriend, how you feel about your dad. Hey, okay. Bob. Yeah. I really admire that, uh, that swing. swing right there with a uh, uh-huh. eight club. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to uh, tell you that I've been feeling really, uh, really lonely. I don't feel comfortable, Chad. I don't feel comfortable. I think I'm feeling lonely because it goes way back to when I was a kid and I was left alone oh, from the geez. time I was three to. Oh, jeez! Did you watch the Masters? Five. Did you watch the Masters? It was quite a, quite a, quite a game, huh? How about you, Bob? Uh, you ever feel these bouts of loneliness? Nah, nah. Like in the car? Or? Nah. How about some beers, man? How about some beers? Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Okay, but you know what? Although that co- particular conversation didn't go That would so be good. awkward. It, 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 that's how you start. And the next well, time... I don't think Bob's going to show up for the next tea time. <laughs> Bob's going to be suddenly very busy. <laughs> but you know what? But you Bob's going to have family in town. Bob's going to have unexpected surgery. I'm just teasing you in this. I'm Chad, I'm being a downer. Okay, Chad's being a total downer. But no. I bet you that would be a nice way to... Uh, open up the doors that you and Chad could have a Bob and Chad could have deeper conversations you know yeah hopefully it goes better so maybe that. maybe take it a little slow yeah like if if you see a co-worker and it's a Monday you can say oh so Bob how was your how was your weekend oh good yeah yeah you know took the kids to the jumper in the park those kids they sure sure are growing up real fast <laughs> yeah Does you it know make you sad Sometimes, yeah. I think about how fast time is passing. Sure. Thank you for asking, Bob. Yeah, no problem. I got to run a meeting. What? what? Oh. So just kind of yeah. lay it down a little bit. Crack that door. But then open. leave. Right. Right? So right. that you're not like dwelling in it too much. Exactly. And then maybe the next time. You can get into a deeper conversation. Yeah, you can get a little deeper. Ah. Right. See, we're pulling out those awkward moments for you so you'll be prepared when it happens to you. Yeah. Okay. So you can get creative physically, emotionally. Skills wise, so that could be playing with an instrument, mm-hmm. pottery, anything that is skills wise. Mm-hmm. And lastly, location. Get creative on where you where you go. Oh, tell me more about that. Right. I like I like the sound of that because we always get stuck in our own physical patterns as well. Mm. Right. We always go to the same store. We always go to the same dry cleaner. Mm-hmm. The same. You kind of do the same routes mm-hmm. in the car. So, so if you walk to work. Try a different route. If you drive, take a slightly different route. I like to do that sometimes mm-hmm. on my way home, you mm-hmm. know, especially because there's traffic. Um, or let's say you shop at a particular place, go to a different place. Mm-hmm. I did a thing uh, when I moved into my house where I visited all the parks in the area. Oh. Yeah, because I have a dog anyway. So I would just take him to one park and then drive to another one, another one. Now I'm familiar with all the parks within like a 10 oh. mile radius. Okay. Yeah. So That's just change a good it idea. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Even if it's just to tell yourself, I'm never going back to that park again. Because <laughs> there was some guys. Like, there, there are a lot of vans here in this park. <laughs> a lot of That's vans. Not good, right? Yeah. A lot of guys on lawn chairs just sitting around next to their vans. So, yeah. are there supposed to be tents in this park? <laughs> yeah. Broken bottles. So it's good information to to get. So those are my. Uh, that's my tip. Just do it. Okay. Awesome. I love those tips. And actually, um, my tips, I'm going to I'm going to piggyback off of your do something different. Mm -hmm. Right. Different routes and things like that. So my first is based on that Seinfeld episode. If you guys ever watch Seinfeld, did you ever watch Seinfeld? Mm -hmm. Do you remember a character named George Costanza who was sort of the the um, perennial Mm -hmm. like kind of loser curmudgeon? Yeah. Um, anyway, he did this thing where he did the opposite of, his name is George Costanza. (laughs) It was called do the opposite of George. So he would do everything opposite of what he would normally do. That's brilliant. And then he would find success 
in those things. So, for example, a woman that he might not necessarily go out with, all of a sudden he would do the opposite mm-hmm. and go out with her. Brilliant. Uh-huh. And then she's this really wonderful woman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he got all these perks from going out with her. Right. So um, one of the ways that I, I would say to to spark, ignite, unleash creativity is to try doing things opposite of what you would normally do. Hmm. Hmm. So can I ask you for some examples? Yeah. So we did, we've done a party example, right? So Mm -hmm. if your natural tendency, when you go to a party and you only know maybe one person there and they're the host and they're busy, you know, hosting, Mm -hmm. hostessing other people at the party and you're left alone to your devices. Mm -hmm. If your normal course is to, you know, get a drink or get a snack and then just plop down in a corner and just wait to be approached. Right. Maybe the next, you know, what would be opposite of that would be to come in and announce yourself. Wow. Hello, everybody. My name is Golda. How are you? Just like that. Or uh, I'm just, a version you know, of that. Uh, yeah. Or if you're waiting for someone to come to you, then maybe you should go to other people. Nice. Nice. Right? Yeah. Maybe if you're asking for people to ask you what you do for a living, maybe you should ask people what they do for a living. Nice. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, if your natural course is to take a plane everywhere, take a train. <laughs> you're right. Drive. Right. You know, take a bicycle, walk, whatever. It's something different. Something different. Yeah, something different. Gotcha. I think that, I think you kind of have to trick your brain sometimes mm-hmm. because it is so used to it. You, you know, like your body is like this this comfortable pillow, comfortable blanket, you know, that you don't want to get out from, up, mm-hmm. up from under. Um, but if you shake things up a little bit, I think you'll be able to rattle some coins underneath there <laughs> and see what else is going on, right? It's like shaking the couch cushions. Exactly. Yeah, because you're rattling your brain. All these coins will fall out. It's like shaking the couch cushions, right? Yeah, and you're like, oh my God, I thought I lost that credit card. Mm-hmm. It was in the duvet this whole time. Ooh, Cheetos. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, you know what? That brings up another thing, which is um, find ways to create little games for yourself, maybe. Right? Yes. Right? Whatever they may be. You know, whatever boring chore you have, can you make a game of it? For example? Hmm, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) For example, I don't like washing the dishes. So I find different ways of washing the dishes to try to conserve water. I challenge, it's a little challenge for myself. Like, how little water can I use when I'm washing the dishes? You know, little things to keep it interesting like that. Or you can come up with a song. As you're putting dishes in the dishwasher. Oh, yeah? Go on. Like, tell me what. Like, oh, my God, I love these saucer and cups. I'm putting the saucer and cups in the dishwasher. And here comes a soap. I'm going to push these buttons right here and turn on the washer. Isn't that Wow. Fun? That was wow. on the fly on right the here. Fly. I did not prepare this. On the fly. Amazing. Amazing. Improv. Wow. I mean, you know, make it fun, right? Is right. what you were saying. I'm going to unjab the Xerox copier. I'm going to pull this jam out. Follow the illustration that's popping up. Lift, left, or lever A. Remove the black ink cartridge. Give it a shake. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> okay, yeah. You can use that song. You can do it for everything. For everything. This, is, this is, of course, copywritten. So don't even think about it, citizens. <laughs> don't even think about it. For every, every little bit. Right. I'm going to pick up the poop that my dog just shit on the floor. Yeah, with a smile. <laughs> mm. Mm. So in other words, what you're saying <laughs> right. is with every day kind of ho-hum activity right make it make it a game make it a game right make it a game and you will derive many benefits like a lower bmi and lower rates of addiction lower rates of dementia (laughs) higher 401k returns uh a better chosen life insurance policy yeah uh more fuel economy fuel economic car yeah honda accord 1996 hashtag Oh, yeah, that's your wheelhouse. I'm just like <laughs> being agreeable. 
Because I'm YOLO. Yeah, she's thinking about a Cinnabon right now. Uh, totally. Um, any the, other tips for yes. unleashing your creativity? Yes, yes, yes. And I, I will say that one of the things about unleashing your creativity is that I don't think that unleashing creativity necessarily needs to be this big, Agreed. gigantic, sweeping Agreed. thing mm-hmm. uh, to be creative. I'm thinking about how to be creative in your daily life mm-hmm. because I am YOLO. How it, can mm-hmm. you do in your daily life? So I, I think one of the things I would say also is have something to look forward to. Oh, Maybe okay. create an opportunity where ahead in the future, mm-hmm. not that much in the future, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yolo's>. <laughs> Not that much in the future, but something to look forward to, like, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe uh, come up with a a dinner party or maybe have a day trip or maybe have a game night or maybe, you know, plan for for, you know, your next vacation or maybe, you know, something fun, something that you can uh, that you can look forward to at the same time that you can be creative about, Mm -hmm. I think would be really uh, valuable. The other thing I would say is to surround yourself with other creatives. Mm, Interesting. So maybe um, get together with like your three or four really creative people. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be at the same time. They could be, it could be individually. Mm-hmm. And talk to them. Ask them what they're up to. Ask them what they're doing. Ask them, you know, what they do when they, uh, how do they get creative or what do they do when they're stuck? Mm-hmm. You know, those types of things. And, and interestingly enough, when you start putting yourself in that space of being with other creatives, it gets you thinking because you want to help them if they're stuck. Totally. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it kind of, it kind of, kind of gets you out of that rut also. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. So I think surrounding yourself with creatives and also there is power in community. So when you are trying to pursue something creative, a lot of times being with other creative people actually will make you more creative it's uh, it's not i don't think at least in our community it's not one where it's like oh shoot they're doing something so mm, i hate them <laughs> it's more How inspiring right than yeah. anything else mm-hmm. would you would you say that's the case absolutely yes mm-hmm. yeah so surrounding yourself with creative people like one is you know one of my go-tos you know for you know if i need to feel inspired and uh and be creative and Aww. you know uh gertie meza as well um you know, and a bunch of other uh, really wonderful creative people. Mm-hmm. Um, and similarly, it's it's people that you know and also people that you don't know. Hmm. What do you mean? So whenever I listen to Adele, everybody knows. Oh, yes. Adele. That's her Jane Goodall. You cannot. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jane Goodall. <laughs> Adele. Um, yes. Um, Adele. Whenever I listen to Adele, forget about it. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever I listen to Sia, mm-hmm. come on. Absolutely. It's like all of a sudden, my I start seeing really bright colors. Right. Vibrant colors. Right. And it, it just motivates me. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's an energy in that. And I would say you can even get creative about how you consume. Right. So read diversify, diversify what books you're reading okay or get into or read you know diversify the websites you visit diversify the music you listen to yes diversify your viewing habits into live performance different types of film yes right yeah and i think that i'm not saying everyone has to produce some sort of art if you don't feel comfortable yeah but if you get creative in the type of stimuli you're giving yourself mm. right you are definitely expanding your mental physical uh, mental and emotional spheres a little bit absolutely i read an article that talked about how music Mm -hmm. um speaking of adele and sia how music can be um a a, a catalyst into um like literally getting your brain waves thinking uh, bigger Mm -hmm. and more creatively and in different ways they did a study about uh one of mozart's sonatas right and they did a bunch of like tests and uh, on people listening to uh, Mozart sonatas, and they found that it increased their spatial intelligence. Whoa! Temporarily, I mean, they can't carry this for the rest of their lives. <laughs> but in that moment, it increased their spatial intelligence. Mozart yeah. sonata. Mozart was around like when was this? Like fifteen hundred or whatever? I don't know. A long I'm totally, time ago. Yeah, like a, a more than fifty years ago. So what you do when you come home? And you're unpacking your groceries. 
Yes. Put on some Mozart. Mm-hmm. Your fridge is going to be organized like in two seconds. Right. Right. Or, or if you're doing your homework uh-huh. and there's a really hard problem. Yeah. Like a geometry problem, which involves yeah. like angles and stuff. Or exactly. Yeah. A geometry problem. Put on one of Mozart's sonatas. Mm-hmm. You're going to just be kicking, kicking out the answers like nobody's business. Right. Right. It's going to come flowing out of you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So music is is one. Um, and then doing the opposite of things is another. Uh, surrounding yourself with other inspirational people. That's true. Is yet another thing. And I think the last bit is to just get yourself just get out of the house. <laughs> just get out. What? Walk to the liquor store or something. I can be creative at home. I can be creative in oh, my Oh, girl. Own. If you're like sitting at home, you're going to be like, oh my God, I have to do the laundry now. Or, oh my I gosh, I'm going gonna, gonna to organize my shelves. I can get creative. I put some Mozart on. I'll, I'll get... Uh, no, no. I agree with her about getting out. Get out of get the out. house. Yeah, that's a good idea. Get yourself out of a routine. And mm-hmm. I think that's... I think that is the trend, the thread that I'm noticing in what we're talking about is... Getting yourself out of the mm-hmm. doldrums. Doldrums. Henceforth, creativity would emerge from your edifices. <laughs> what, what was that? What's that now? What's a, who's a what? Your edifices. Edifices. <laughs> Which is an acronym. Right. For stuff that. Well, thank you, you know, so much like for sharing. Skin and stuff. Yeah. Thank I'm actually, uh, I actually have a bachelor's degree. <laughs> right, well, I ha- thank you for sharing. <laughs> Can you close this out with a little, little Ooh. song, your little song again? Oh, my little song? So let's it end this might, segment. It might have changed because I don't remember how it went. <laughs> I'll help um, you out here. But um, creativity, you need it. Yeah. Creativity. It's, ooh, oh, and that's door. it for now. Here is a segment. The products we love, someday this will come true. Dream sponsors. Now we'd like to give a shout out to our commercial sponsors. So awkward moment when, when, we, when we acknowledge that we actually don't have any commercial sponsors. Mm. But these would be our dream commercial sponsors if we were Not to yet. Them. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So Golda, We're taking calls now. Whenever you're ready. We just haven't decided which ones we would like to accept. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we do have products and companies that we actually have used Mm -hmm. and that we want to share with the good people out there. Because we're loving them. Yes. And so we are sharing all of these products for free. So we're not getting anything from any of these sponsors. So we're not being no, we're not sponsored for this. So you know that we're, we're being straight up. Yeah. Uh, so should I go first with my dream yes. commercial sponsor? Tell me. Actually, I don't even know if they can sponsor anyone because oh. they're nonprofit, I believe. But oh. I would like to give a shout, shout out to okay. Wikipedia. Wikipedia. I don't think I've ever seen a Wikipedia commercial. I don't think so either. Hmm. I think they just have people working on it, like volunteers can Is go. Is that how that works? Mm-hmm. I have only heard folklore. Yeah, as far as what Wikipedia is all about. So you're saying that any any Tom, Dick, and Jane can go and can edit go in. and edit an article. And who is reviewing this information? So I hear there are a team of people. Again, they don't get any money, but yeah. they are called. Let's say I'm making this up. Wikipedia specialists. Okay. And mm-hmm. they actually kind of peruse the different articles and edit them for accuracy and for grammar and stuff. Wow. And they don't they don't get paid. Why are they doing this? Cuz they want to share information to the world. Wow. Yeah. So part of our creativity thing is to stim- stimulate your mind, right? Okay. So they have something called Today's Featured Articles. If you go on the main page, mm-hmm. they have a new article every day. You can learn learn about the Duke of Earl or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a random thing every day. Scorpions. Mhm. <laughs> whatever. A delicacy called scorpions. Right. Charles Dickens. So you can go on the main page to read the featured article, or you can go on the tab, which is super fun, and you click a tab that says random article, and they give you the most random ass article. What's the best thing you've um, seen on Wikipedia? Oh my God. Where has it been the most beneficial for you? Why would the good people out there care about Wikipedia? Because I've won so many bets. 
during Ooh. dinner parties due because to Wikipedia. Thank you, Wikipedia. And that's why you're my commercial sponsor. So Wikipedia is your fact check. Mm-hmm. And it is credible. Mm-hmm. And if not, I will go on later that night and edit the article to make sure it reflects my what I said at dinner. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Exactly. And unscrupulous at exactly. the same time. So what is your commercial dream commercial sponsor? Well, uh, I am in travel mode right now. I'm actually going to go uh, abroad Ooh. for a few weeks. And uh, one of the things that I find extremely stressful mm-hmm. is packing. Who doesn't? And oh packing all the right things. Oh because my you think that I was going to some cave in the middle of nowhere where there's not, you know, like a <laughs> Dwayne Reed or a Rite Aid or a Macy's or whatever. Right. But I am going to a major metropolitan city that mm-hmm. probably has a lot of things. But needless to say, I still stress out a lot about packing. I understand. But what I have discovered to be one of my saving graces, thank you, thank you, are these things from a really wonderful company. There's, there's many manufacturers out there, but there's a company called called e-bags uh which specializes in yes e-bags they specialize in bags wow (laughs) and mostly specialize in travel uh you know um luggage so Mm -hmm. any accoutrements for travel they'll have there as well but e-bags has uh, these things called packing cubes have you ever used packing cubes i have yes now, these are the ones that I have in a Tiffany blue. Beautiful. Uh, from eBag. So this one has machones in it, which is um, uh, Spanish for uh, your delicacies. <laughs> yeah. Or your delicates. Like, not, ooh. De- ooh. <laughs> not the delicacies that like, you want to eat. Like, not scorpion. like an empanada. Or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is uh, your delicates. Like I, I put them in yeah. this nice little small bag. But this is everything that I need for two weeks. And we're what? assuming for, for your delicates. That's two weeks worth of chonies? That's exactly right. Now, mind you, I bathe once a day. <laughs> so this isn't like once every three days kind of a situation. This is a <laughs> once a day at least uh-huh. situation. This is one and a half weeks worth of chones. And uh, for, e-bags. Those, for those listening to the podcast, Golda is holding up a bag about the size of a, what Like a you? book, like a novel, like a hardback novel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the thickness of maybe two inches yeah. or so. Yeah. And it's a mesh bag yes. with a nylon exterior and a zip. Mm-hmm. And a dual zip situation. She put all the chonies in there, two weeks. Got my chones. Do you have a spare? I'm ready. Just in case? Oh, I always do in my hand carry. I mean, do you have a spare choney? Yeah, I always carry an extra chone. <laughs> All right. And you know, now they've got um, those these uh, disposable underwear. You know about this? I have not heard about yeah, this. Yeah, you can buy it and then you wear it hopefully once. <laughs> and then you just dispose of it. They're like contact lenses, like the dailies for your for your eyes yeah. contact lenses and then you wear it once and then you dispose of it after one day's wear uh-huh. you can do the same thing with chones or underwear at the same time now i don't know if everybody does it and what it might look like after more than one use but anyway we're veering off into we a don't, very we don't endorse that we're endorsing no, we don't want the e-bags that. right now just the e-bags okay right? and then they come in various sizes so this is uh, is half full and this is where i'm going to put my um my pants you know any bottoms mm-hmm. i'll put in this and then i'll have a similar bag uh for uh, my tops for example so when i put them into my uh suitcase it all it's 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 like spatial intelligence <laughs> where it all just kind of clicks together right it's like tetris but instead of just throwing a bunch of clothes in your suitcase and you know stuffing it in there and hoping that you know everything fits right now you you know you can eyeball an open suitcase and you can say oh that bag over there that looks like the size of a novel that's my chones my Mm -hmm. underwear oh that bag that's you know like the side of a a size of a baking sheet right perfect analogy right a baking Uh sheet oh that has all of my blouses in it yeah you know or in that one and you can even color code things but what i've realized is by putting them in these cubes by e-bags um, and I've, I've had these cubes for several years, so they've lasted a good long while. And I've, I've realized that it's, it's, it's been a saving grace for me to, to get my head in that right space mm-hmm. of, you know, do I have everything? And I can just quickly 
you know, scan my, my maleta or my, my suitcase that I have it. So mm-hmm. that's my, that is my commercial. I wish that they were my, sp- our sponsor, gotcha. eBags. They make really wonderful project, products. Right. And you are going to, s- to Spain, right? Si, sí, señorita. And that's why she's practicing well, so that's bad. Spanish. I shouldn't have said it like that. I should have said, si, sí, señorita. Okay. Gracias, Golda. Si, sí, voy, a, voy a Barcelona. And that was our commercial sponsors. Now we're ready to launch into a segment that we call Girl, You Got To, where we talk about things, best practices that mm-hmm. we think that would make your life so much better and so much easier. One room, what's your girl you got to? So this week, my girl you got to is girl you got to reduce the num- number of products that you use. For what kind of products? So health and beauty products specifically. Oh. I read a statistic that women are exposed to 168 chemicals Ooh. by the amount of products they're putting on their bodies daily. Yikes. Now, I am probably exposed to way more chemicals than that oh because boy. I'm a beauty junkie. So I'm yeah. probably like at 300. Okay, because I'm just slathering, you know, slathering things on myself. Uh, by the way, I really didn't like the credibility. I mean, the, I'm not sure the source is really credible. Okay, because <laughs> okay. Chemical, everything is a chemical. You know what I mean? Like vitamin C, that's a chemical. You yeah, know, you can manufacture that, or a fruit can produce it naturally. Yeah, but vitamin C is a chemical. So. Yeah. I think they mean 168 man-made chemicals. I don't okay. think they mean like coconut oil, right? Okay. They're okay. talking about things that you normally would not have been introduced to if you didn't use this particular beauty product. Okay. okay. So if you didn't use any beauty product at all, it, that number would be zero. Close to zero. Right. Close okay. to zero. Right. 168. Yeah. Okay. And then they said that men are exposed to 85 chemicals daily due to the personal healthcare products that they use. Wow, half. Half yeah. of what women get, right? Right, right. So that kind of made me think, huh, okay, mm. like, let's say men are the more baseline for more minimal product use. Yeah. That means I'm probably like at 400 or something like that, <laughs> right? So right. I have decided to cut back where I can. Okay, so I yeah. switched over to natural deodorant, Ooh. which has been an interesting process. Oh, I want to hear about that. But that'll be a whole nother topic maybe for our health and beauty. Natural deodorant, like what? Like a coconut husk? <laughs> like you just rub a raw coconut on your armpit? <laughs> yeah. Coconut on one armpit and the papaya on, on the, the other, other one. one. See which one You works. shave it first though. You shave it. What? The armpit or the papaya? Or, uh, the, or the coconut? You shave the horns of the papaya and then you shave your pectoral armpits i was gonna say something else (laughs) but i didn't okay so where i can i've switched over to unfragranced okay items because a fragrance is usually synthetic yeah artificial yeah so a easy way to pare down on the number of chemicals you're being exposed to is switch over to unscented products because that's probably a two or three chemicals you're Mm, reducing already right yeah i can see that that's also been an interesting journey where you wash your clothes in unscented detergent. And you're like, is this wash? <laughs> you're like, is this clean? Does it smell like it. Does it smell like a field? <laughs> Man. Where's the lavender? It smells worse than when I washed this before I washed it yeah. somehow. I'm going to wash it again because <laughs> the I can't fresh. tell. But then your, your nose gets used to it, though. That's gets amazing. used to not having a scent. Not having a scent. And then pretty soon... The, the lack of a scent smells good to you. And an artificial fragrance is actually overpowering mm. as you get sens- desensitized to sensitize. Dis- uh, desensitized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have a ba- We have bachelors. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So that is my girl. You got to cut down, cut down on the number of products that you're using to okay. reduce your uh, exposure to man-made chemical chemicals. I like it. Okay. I like it. Um, My girl you got to is um, compliment somebody. Oh. Compliment. And and I say somebody meaning at least one, but compliment people. 
Do you ever realize how how good you feel when someone compliments you? If like, let's say you got your hair done. Have you ever got your hair done or got your hair cut? And it's been like two weeks and nobody says anything until like three weeks later. They're like, something's different about you. Mm hmm. And then you get a new shirt. Then you're like all bitter and resentful by that time. You got a haircut like two weeks ago. Thanks for noticing. What kind of friend are you? Yeah, I mean, compliment someone sincerely and authentically, right? Mm -hmm. So notice, try and find something good about someone. Like, let's say you're at the line in the grocery store. You know, maybe the, the cashier, compliment them. I'm sure they need some positivity or if you're at the apple store Mm -hmm. and they're helping you at the apple store compliment Mm -hmm. your your apple representative Mm -hmm. or you're at work right Mm -hmm. you know you're at you're in the lunchroom right you know and the receptionist walks in so and also make it authentic right yeah don't Don't be fake about it yeah don't say oh my god i love your shirt yes don't do that don't do that just say just say that color is very attractive on you. The shape yes. of it is horrible, but the color is very attractive. But just keep that second part to yourself. Now, I will to say yourself. with a caveat, having an HR background, <laughs> that choose your words carefully. Yes. You know, attractive versus flattering. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Right. And you flattering. can always authentically find something to compliment someone about. You may have to get creative, right? Talk yes. about creativity. What a way to get creative. But make sure it's authentic. Yes, and, and, and be careful that your compliment doesn't sound like a passive-aggressive comment. <laughs> like, for example. for example, I like your bob. It makes your nose look smaller. Mm. No. Yeah. Passive-aggressive. Oh, your eye makeup is so much better today. It's a lot less slutty than the way you normally wear it. Yeah, you look, you look like you, someone that somebody would want to marry now. Yeah, it was fantastic. Did you lose weight? I did. Oh, my God. I can totally tell. I was getting concerned for a while. Hey, I can't smell anything on you. You must be on that natural product high. I am. I am. I hope it smells good. Um, I think we're almost there. <laughs> we're almost, where are we? To not smelling like anything. I can smell less of you than I did a week ago. How's my papaya and coconut underarm deodorant working? It smells good. However, the, the titsy flies that are <laughs> hovering around your armpits, Small I think they're price. attracted by citrusy type of foods. Small price to pay. Small price to pay. But yes, pay a compliment this week. Compliment. Yeah. Authentically. But also, you know... Be and careful it doesn't sound like a passive-aggressive comment. Right. Report back. Let us know how it goes. And that's our two. Girl, you got to. And that's it for today's episode of The Ganru Show, Unleashing Your Creativity. So, Wanru, what's your takeaway for today? I would say my takeaway is do as many weird things as possible so that when you go to a dinner party... You won't be a boring person to talk to. Absolutely. You will have stories to tell. That, and don't be afraid to take some emotional risks with people you know. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Um, Mine is to develop your skills. So whether or not it's a um, sport Mm-hmm. Uh, or um, learning a new skill like um, like guitar, yes, mm-hmm. or cello, or violin, or even learning how to dance like salsa. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, really quick um, tidbit: Jude Law once said, Jude Law, the actor, once said that every uh, role that he eventually does before he launches into filming for that role, he learns a new dance. What? Yeah, to get his head out of that space. Isn't that brilliant? Mm -hmm. I just remember that. To distract his mind, he he kind of throws his body out of whack, right? And he's so concentrated on these changes to his body and learning to do a new physical task that he doesn't have time to overthink. Exactly. Right? Yes, exactly. And mm-hmm. he is, um, he's an actor where he you know, has to throw himself into his creativity, especially in every role that you play, right? Mm-hmm. So he actually uses something physical, like a new dance, to get himself out of his own way yeah. and into that creative space. So I'm going to try that. 
I'm yeah. going to try and do something different. I'm going to try and learn something different. So before the next podcast, what dance are you going to learn? Oh, boy. Well, I want to do something that you've already done. So Juan Ru's done tap dance, oh. which I've always wanted to do. You'll love it. For the inner Ginger Rogers, Fred Astaire and you. You will love it. I want to learn how to tap, although I don't think my neighbors would appreciate it. But that's okay. It's just like when I was learning tennis. And I was learning how to hit the ball. I used to hit it against the wall of my neighbor's house. <laughs> that they, probably they, they never said anything. I'm going to do the same thing exactly. with the tap dance. Exactly. And while you're unleashing your creativity, don't worry about what your neighbors are thinking. Yeah, they don't worry be, about getting interrupted by that knock no, earlier. Just that, keep before. unleashing, okay? We obviously tape this in our house. <laughs> We don't, we're not in a studio. Yeah, that's how she's able to just grab things that she needs, like those e-bags or whatever. It's all here. Yeah, it's just convenient. Within located. arm's reach. All right. Well, I learned a lot. Me too. I felt like I, I unleashed some things. I do too. Yeah. It's, it's now leashed, unleashed out. <laughs> it's out in the, the stratosphere. <laughs> so <laughs> if you feel this was at all stimulating, at all interesting, please I feel. I think they would have. Yes, let's just say that you think you do find it have. interesting. Feel free to share, like us, and comment. Review us on iTunes. We always like getting reviews, good ones. Mm-hmm. And if you would like to see Golda's e bags, and that's not a euphemism for something else, like literally, her, check out my e bags. Her bags of her bag of chonies. Please um, go to our YouTube channel. But they're hidden behind mesh, <laughs> so there's mystery. <laughs> So, th- all right. So, until next time, I'm Golda. And I'm Monru. And this has been the Gone Roo Show. See all you right. next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.